So you just bought yourself a brand new filter, congratulations. Probably one of these or something similar and you have no idea where these ceramic rings go. Not to worry. Not only am I going to tell you where they go in each one of these filters and their equivalent counterparts, I'm also going to show you. Let's go. Welcome back to the channel everybody. If it's your first time here, my name is Kev from CavemanAquatics.com and on this channel I like to make helpful videos on all topics of the aquarium hobby that get straight to the point. So if you like the sound of that, consider subscribing and you won't miss any new content. So before we start, let me just say I know you're probably looking for your specific type of filter instructions. I will have timestamps in the description below with each type of filter so you can jump straight to the one you want. But before you do that, I do implore you to watch the whole video because you might be starting off with a nice little HOB and one day you might upgrade to a canister like this and then eventually a bigger canister like this. So you might as well get all the information right now. Just my opinion. So the two big canisters, the 407 and the FX6, I actually pulled out from underneath my tank to do this video. But I didn't have an HOB so I went ahead and bought a Fluvo Aqua Clear 70 to show you guys exactly how to do it. So before we start talking about where your ceramic rings go, you need to understand that the reason why they go where they go is because of the direction of water in your filter. And each one of these are different. That's why I'm covering them separately. In the AquaClear, it's designed for water to go from the bottom to the top. So the direction of media in any filter is always going to be the same. It always goes mechanical first and then biological and finally chemical if you choose to use it. Now, granted, there are some exceptions to that rule which we are going to get into later on in the video, so don't miss it. But for right now, that's the rule. Mechanical, bio, then chemical. So, in the aqua clear, because it goes from the bottom to the top, our first thing that we're going to put in the bottom is our sponge. Mind you, in the aqua clear, you can actually take out this media basket. So, the first thing at the bottom of the basket is going to be your sponge. That's your mechanical filtration on the bottom. Now, if you bought this filter brand new and you look at the box, it actually does show you a picture of which way they want you to stack this. I'm going to tell you not to do it in that order because it actually has your chemical media next. I'm going to suggest that you put your bio media, your ceramic rings, right on top of your sponge. That goes next. Obviously, not in this plastic bag, guys. Your aqua clear comes with a mesh nylon bag. You want to put your ceramic rings inside the nylon bag and then they go right on top of the sponge. I'm not doing it guys because I'm not installing this HOB. This isn't going to go on any tank. So I'm keeping it inside the bag. But this is where your ceramic rings will go. Right on top of your sponge. Then on top of your bio media is where you would put your chemical media. In this case, it comes with a nice bag of activated carbon. Your activated carbon will go right on top as so. Again, not in this plastic bag. But you do want to leave it inside the mesh bag that's inside the plastic bag. So just open up the plastic bag and throw in the carbon with the mesh bag inside your filter. That's pretty much it for the aqua clear. It's very simple as to where the ceramic media goes. It always goes mechanical, then bio media, and finally chemical on top if you choose to use it. A very similar HOB to the aqua clear is the Tidal from Seachem. The Tidal also has water traveling in the same direction from the bottom to the top. So you would do the exact same thing. Sponge on the bottom, bio media in the center, chemical media on top, of your title as well. Now for the penguin users, the penguin HOB is a little bit different. Those come with cartridges and water actually flows from the back of the HOB to the front. So keeping in mind the order of media based on the direction of water flow, you would want to have your sponge in the back, then your bio media, and finally chemical media in front if you can fit all that. Normally those cartridges that come with that filter take up all the space. But if you want better options for your Penguin HOB, I have a great video on exactly how to set that up. I'll put a link up here and in the description below. Next up guys, we have our Fluval 407. And the equivalent filter to the 07 series obviously is all the 07s. The 107, the 207, the 307 and the 407 are all built exactly the same. The only difference is the 407 has four trays, the 307 has three and so on. Now the reason why we need to talk about this separately is because the direction of water in a canister is different from the direction of water in an HOB. In the 407, in any 07 fluval canister, water is going to travel down one side through your coarse and medium sponges and then it's going to shoot across the bottom 
and then go back up through the trays and out to your tank. So, in this case, the first tray that water hits is going to be your bottom tray. So let's work from bottom to top. Your bottom tray is going to consist of your black core sponge. This is mechanical media. Then you can put a white fine filter pad right on top of there. That also comes with your 407. Your second tray, in my opinion, I like to use polyfill. As you can see it's still wet. I tried to dry it up, but it's still wet. I like to use polyfill in my second tray. This is fine mechanical media that's going to grab all the tiny little particles in your water and give you crystal clear water. You don't have to use polyfill here if you don't want to. You can add biomedia right to the second tray. But because this is the 407 and it comes with four trays, I feel like using this second tray for a complete uh, polishing material in here is going to make your tank look great. In the third tray from the bottom, guess what we got guys? Ceramic rings. Here's where our ceramic rings will begin. This is the first step of your biomedia. I like to put this right on the third tray right after my mechanical media. So we got coarse mechanical media and then fine mechanical media and then finally your ceramic rings go in the third tray. Now for the fourth tray again, this is optional. You can choose to put chemical media inside your fourth tray if you choose to use it or you can add more biomedia. A while back I chose to use these bio balls in my top tray and since these bio balls are already seeded with beneficial bacteria, I'm not going to change them out. So the choice is add more ceramic rings to your top tray or you can add chemical media into your top tray. And that's where your ceramic rings will go in a canister filter like the 07 series. Now here's a tip with this guys. If you decide to use chemical media in your top tray and you decide to use something like Purigen, the bag of Purigen is so thin that if you put a bag of Purigen by itself in this tray, there's gonna be a lot of leftover space. What happens when you leave all that extra space in the tray is that water is gonna go around your Purigen and not through it which defeats the purpose. So a little trick that I like to use is I wrap my Purigen in polyfill and then put it in the tray. That way, instead of just going around the Purigen, now the water has to go through the polyfill and through the Purigen in order to get back out. Now, other equivalent canisters of this size will be pretty similar to where your ceramic rings go. These kind of filters usually have water shoot down to the bottom and then work its way up. So as long as water is traveling up your canister filter, you always want your mechanical filtration on the bottom and then your ceramic rings on top and finally chemical media if you choose to use it. For those of you that can't keep your eyes off these beautiful fish and wish you could learn more about them, well, you're in luck because I have a free webinar training with the top three secrets about keeping African cichlids. Make sure to check it out up here or in the description below. Now let's move on to the big boy. And I can tell you right now guys, that you may not have an FX6 right now. You may even think you'll never need an FX6. Well, in this hobby, it's very, very common to upgrade tanks, upgrade filters. So never say never. It's better that you get this information now. So if one day you do decide to upgrade to the FX6, you know exactly what's going on. Now, the FX6 is a whole different animal. This filter, they decided to redesign the whole thing, which makes everything different and if you just don't know about FX6s, you're gonna fill it up the wrong way. Just like with the other filters, I'm gonna first tell you about how water travels through the filter because we need to understand that in order to know where our ceramic rings go. In the Fluvo FX6, water enters the canister and shoots down a tube all the way to straight to the bottom. From the bottom of the canister, water travels up the sides of these trays through these coarse sponges. See these coarse sponges here? Each tray has these big coarse sponges in it. As water is traveling up the sides through these coarse sponges, it's getting mechanically filtered. Then, once it reaches the top, it overflows into the middle and goes down the center. So when you think about each tray that you're going to add media to, water is traveling from the top tray down the center. Once water hits the bottom center of the canister, it's then shot back out to your tank. So why am I telling you all that? Because you need to mechanically filter your water from the top of this canister down unlike the other ones where it was from the bottom up so your top tray of the fx6 is going to have more mechanical filtration i like to have a blue medium sponge on top followed by a white filter floss pad now before we move on i did say there were some exceptions to the rule of the order of media which is mechanical bio and then chemical in the FX6, the way the FX6 is designed, it's designed to not have to go into it and clean it 
every so often. Meaning that the FXs can go four, five, or even six months without needing a cleaning. But if you've got chemical media in it or fine filter pads like this, these cannot go six months without being changed. These and your chemical media need to be changed probably monthly. With that being the case, you don't wanna to have to open up your canister every single month just to get to the chemical media and the fine pads and disturb all the bacteria that's in there just to change out a piece of chemical media. So through the help of my Facebook group and some great knowledgeable guys that we got over there, I decided to change the way I set up my FX6 and it's been working great so far. So the order of media that I choose in the FX6 goes mechanical first through the outside sponges and then chemical media followed by the bio media on the bottom. Reason for this is if your chemical media is on the top tray, in the top tray, every month all you got to do is pop the top off of your FX6, reach into the top tray, pull out your chemical media, put in a new one, put in a new fine filter pad, and pop the top back on, and you're done. No need to take all three of these trays out, water dripping all over the place, making a mess of everything to get to the chemical media in your bottom tray. No, put it in your top tray, very easily accessible, You'll thank me later. One more tip about the top tray in your FX6. If you're only using Purigen in your FX6, like I am currently, check it out. Look at how much space is around that bag of Purigen. Now, water's not gonna choose to go through the bag of Purigen. Water's gonna choose to go around it. It's gonna choose the path of least resistance. Gonna do it every time. So that makes your Purigen worthless. Now, unlike these other filters where we use polyfill, I feel that the FX6 is too powerful and can actually push the polyfill through your canister and back out to your tank, which is why I use these filter pads instead. So a nice trick that I use for this Purigen bag is I sandwich it inside the filter floss. See, I put it as a sandwich inside the filter pads. In between, I put those in the bottom there and then my medium blue pad on top. The reason why I do that, again, just like in the 407, is to force water through the bag of Purigen. If it's gotta go through those fine filter pads, it's gonna also find its way through the Purigen, which is the path of least resistance. Enough about the top tray, where do the ceramic rings go? They go in your next tray, your second tray, middle tray. Now the FX6 does have a red basket that goes in here as well. That's just to separate media if you're gonna use two different types of media. But if you're gonna use all ceramic rings, which is fine, here's where you throw your whole bag of ceramic rings fill this whole sucker up with as much ceramic rings as you can and that's where they go. Now bottom tray, what goes in here since we already put our chemical media on the top tray, guess what? More ceramic rings or maybe some matrix or maybe some biohome ultimate, whatever type of media that you choose to use, whatever media you have on hand, add some more in here. If you got space in these trays for biomedia, fill it up with biomedia. In my case, most of you know that I don't use any of these biomedias anymore I've got a great video on the actual biometer that I use, especially in my FX6s. It's called Pot Scrubbers. If you don't know what that is, go check that video out right there. I have a link in the description below. And you might ask, where are they right now? Let me show you. Check them out, guys. Since I'm using my FX6 that I had installed on my tank, I had to take the pot scrubbies out to show you guys where your ceramic rings will go. So I decided to keep them in here temporarily in my grow out tank just to preserve all that beneficial bacteria that's in those pot scrubbies. Again, if you're like pot scrubbies, go check that video out, you'll enjoy it. I hope you guys found that helpful. If you did, make sure to hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe because next week's video is gonna be a banger. See ya on the next one.